The talk we will have right now is from Felicitus, and he will say us something about solar powered autonomous routers. Give him a warm applause, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming here, many people. I hope I don't get too nervous, but uh, yeah. Let's get started. Um, yeah, my name is Felicitos, and I'm talking about solar-powered autonomous routers. And um, one thing I might uh, explain first is um, I'm not at the autonomous router stage yet. So what I've done so far is uh, build a router, which is actually an open VRT device um, sitting in my garage and um, just publishing data um, to the internet. It's not routing at all right now, but of course it's an open VRT device, so you can actually do routing with it. So let's uh, have a look at the solar system types. Uh, there are two main types, um, the grid-connected ones and the standalone ones. Um, I'm using uh, the abbreviation uh, PV in my talk, um, which is short for photovoltaic um, systems, but PV is shorter, so uh, whenever you encounter the PV, uh, you know it's photovoltaic. OK, so uh, the grid-connected PVs is what you see everywhere. Uh, they are in houses, they are connected to grid, so if there's no sun, you still get power. And um, yeah, if, there's, uh, if you gain so much energy from your solar system, um, it will be fed back into the grid. So you have no losses there. Um, yeah, that's a typical um, solar system. It's right uh, on the other side of, my, of the street I'm living in. And yeah, they install like, uh, like one kilowatt peak or something like that. So um, if you have solar panels, they are usually measured in uh, kilowatt peaks or watt peaks. Um, that's because the solar panels are, um, uh, yeah, have, have a rating, which is a nominal output wa uh, value. If you have, have like um, 250 uh, watts peak, it means that it's um, at full sunlight, and then of course it will decrease as the sun um, goes away. But we'll get to that later on. Um, these are standalone PVs. Um, yeah, it's a little bit hard to see due to sun but um, it's a, a parking machine um, which can operate completely without um, connected to any mains, to any grid. Um, they have a battery inside and they have a little solar panel which uh, stores the energy. So um, that's the type of um, PV system we are talking about here. And yeah, that's your typical uh, standalone PV setup um, where you have your um, solar module, you have your uh, lead acid battery, you have your charge controller, and you have your load uh, represented by the uh, light bulb. And that's all you ne basically need for a solar system, uh, which you want to um, operate uh, 24 hours and 365 days a year. And the real challenge is to um, design the system that you don't need uh, uh, to recharge it at any point in uh, your operation. And yeah, we have uh, a few considerations to do that. Um, the important, the most important thing you need to consider is the load. So um, you cannot say, okay, I buy a panel and, a uh, and I buy a battery, and then I can hook everything uh, I want. So you actually need to know which device you actually want to power with. And that's the base of your um, calculations um, to find out the correct battery size and the correct panel size. So um, I mentioned earlier, the most important factor is the watts peak. So you can get like um, small solar panels with 50 watts, 20 watts, 100 watts, and 250 watts. And they are all measured in watts peak. And its uh, watts peak is uh, measured with an irradiance of 1,000 watt per square meter. It's a standardized. Um, value so you can uh, actually compare solar panels from one manufacturer um, to another or from uh, one solar panels type to another because there are quite some. There is um, polycrystalline, there's monocrystalline and so on. Um, but if you have a uh, your watt peaks, you know uh, how to compare it. So um, yeah, the maximum output power could be higher if you have really bright sun. Um, so um, yeah, 
but don't count on it. And your typical energy of um, harvesting will be less, much less than the watt peaks. So I have, uh, at home I have a 20 watt panel, and yeah, I, I typically get mm, yeah maybe 10 watts on a bright sunny day, and maybe two watts or one watt out of it. Um, yeah, when it's raining. So it depends, and it's in, in summer I expect it to be much less in winter. Um, yeah, that's uh, for the. Uh, like five to ten percent in summer, probably one to two percent in winter. So it 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 varies actually a bit with uh, your location. Um, so if you're in Italy, maybe um, you will get much more energy out of your cell with the same cell uh, than you might do uh, in Great Britain. A little bit thing um, about batteries. Um, there has been quite some discussion uh, with me um, prior the talk. This is not the first talk I'm I'm giving. Um, people are saying, hey, uh, can I use my li LiPo batteries or something else? And I've researched it a little bit and I always say, okay, take the lead acid type battery. That's the battery you want and um, you have no problems with that or very little problems. They are easy to charge. They require almost no maintenance. Um, they are perfect for like hot or, or cold temperatures. So they they don't really don't care. Uh, the only problem is that if you have a lead acid battery, um, the capacity will go down. So it's uh, minus 10 uh, degrees, uh, only 70%, or minus 20 degrees, I think it's 50% or something. That's something you need to consider if you're maybe um, living in uh, Russia or, where, or in Siberia, where it's really cold. So you might need a bigger battery. But uh, for our calculations, I will focus on um, yeah, the typical um, Central European um, weather, yeah. What you can do is you can take a car battery. Um, they are pretty cheap compared to uh, real solar batteries. Um, but yeah, if you can get a real sealed lead acid battery, it's much better. Um, because um, you can... Um, the sealed uh, lead acid battery, you can place it in any uh, position and the uh, car batteries always need to stand up upright. So that's one thing you need maybe to consider. Um, the most important parameters are the amp hours and the voltage. And the voltage for most lead acid batteries is about 12 volts. Uh, that's the nominal value. If, you, if they are charged, they are like 13.9 uh, uh, or 14 volts. And if you uh, discharge them, um, they will actually go down to like 10 um, or 9.5 volt, depending on the type. So um, if you have questions about your lead acid battery, always consult your data sheet. It's the most important um, piece of information you can get for your battery because they are so m different and so many uh, manufacturers that you really want to look in the data sheet. Um, in this talk, I will uh, take the VRT45G. That's a router you should every everyone uh, knows it, or most people know it. And yeah, it's rated at 12 volts and 1 amps, which makes 12 watts of power usage. And yeah, I have one of these devices and I measured it, and it's about 8 watts um, average power usage. And the so we can uh, just multiply that with our 24 hours, and we get uh, 192 watt hours per day. So that's our value we need to concentrate on. That's the basis of all calculations. And let's um, look at the batteries. Um, of course, uh, half the day is uh, darkness, or about half of the day. And so we need to compensate for uh, 95 watt hours uh, we lose at night because there is obviously no sun. Oh, sorry. Um, so the battery needs to be at least 8 amp hours so we can cover up the night. And that's not really a calculation, it's an estimation. Um, but we'll get back to that later. Um, it's, yeah, you, you cannot charge your battery full every day because there's, uh, there are rainy days, there are really dark days. Um, Maybe uh, in Africa, where you have really, really um, much sun, you could do it, but it's not impossible. Uh, it's, not, it's really impossible in, uh, in Europe. So, um, yeah, that's uh, what you need to consider. And 
we have a reduced capacity and light in winter. So it's not only uh, the missing light, but it's also the battery capacity going down. So we also need to compensate for that. And uh, as you will see in a few minutes, uh, it's really getting nasty to um, estimate the correct battery size and the solar panel size. Because you think uh, it's, it's only a router, but what, what, which power could it uh, draw? But it's really, really lots of power uh, which we need to harvest through the um, solar cell. So um, about the solar cell considerations. We have a, um, oh sorry, I, I need to uh, think it through. Um, yeah, we have uh, like, that's an estimation I made of the 1% of the watt, watt peak. So uh, if you take like a 250 watt peak um, cell, I expect that it will be only delivering two and a half watts um, in winter. So um, that's what I uh, based the calculation on or the uh, estimation. And I said, okay, I have the eight watts peak uh, for my router and I multiplied by 100 means that I would uh, need a 800 watt solar panel. And an 800 watt solar panel is like this big and this high. So um, yeah, it sounds pretty much. Um, so get, let's back to the battery calculations and um, or the estimation. And what you also need to consider, there are days where you have really, really bright uh, sun. Like the past few days we had, there was a little bit of rain, but it was mainly sunny. So um, I expect that the battery uh, we are using in our imaginary system would be like full on the first day. Um, and it, it can't get any fuller because uh, it's already full. So we are losing power by the sun. Um, we cannot store. And then there are days we don't have any solar power at all, like on, on rainy days or on, on dark days um, in the winter. So um, the battery needs to cope up for that. And yeah, it's really, really hard to, to, to calculate the actual setup. So we need to... Um, look at a tool which I found um, like half a year ago and it's called uh, PVGIS. It's unfortunately only available for Europe and Africa. Um, it's developed by uh, that um, joint research center of the uh, European Union. And uh, yeah, you can, um, it's a screenshot. I don't know if you can see it because of the light. Um, you can actually um, go to your location and uh, do estimations on your plan setup. So you put in, there is the, um, this is the estimated uh, PV, uh, sorry, this is the, uh, oh man, I can't read it, can't read it. Uh, enter peak PV power is standing there. Okay, this is my 800 watt peak. Um, this is my 80 amp hour battery. This is my 12 volts and I click on calculate and oops. Um, this is the result calculation for my uh, location, and it says um, this is the month from uh, January to December. Um, this is the, uh, I think, uh, sorry, I can't read it really. Um, oh, yeah, okay, this, this is the estimated uh, daily power consumption. This is the uh, amount, the percentage of days uh, where the battery is full, and this is the percentage of days the battery is empty. So you can hardly see that um, the battery is full, like from uh, yeah, from from March to to October, the battery is full every day. And um, yeah, same goes for um, battery empty. Um, there is a zero in all of the columns in that month period. Uh, the battery won't get empty in summer with that size. But um, if you look at January, um, the battery is full only 67% of um, the days. And it's empty at 2% of all days. So that means this is quite a huge setup with an 800 watt peak panel and an 80 watt, uh, sorry, 80 amp hour battery, which is really huge. It's huger than usually, usually car has. And we still uh, can't get enough power to, to um, operate the router in January. So you might ask, OK, um, sorry, I have um, put up two rules of thumb. So you can quickly estimate your um, 
the uh, solar panel size, you just multiply your power of the circuit um, by 100 and you get your watts peak and the same goes for the battery, uh, multiply your um, circuit power by 10 and you get your um, battery size. So in this case, these are the 800 watt peaks and the 80 amp hours. And the thing to do here is um, not to make your solar panels large, but to shrink your power consumption. That's the basic um, thing you need to do if you really want to um, go down in size and uh, down in costs. So um, I'm using a uh, router which is based on the R AR99, sorry, AR931 chipsets. Um, but the 9331 is also nice, um, and they have about um, half to watt power. So it's about a tenth of the size we need for uh, the um, VRT device, the um, VRT 54TL. Um, what you can also do is, um, if you can't reach that, uh, reduce your um, your device power consumption, you can also turn it off when it's not required. Um, but uh, I believe that uh, this is the wrong approach. So if you really, um, uh, sorry, questions? Or you can try to modify the device, yes. Um, but that's not always an option and not always working as you might expect. So what can we do also to reduce or to get more efficiency? Um, the regular charge controllers you can get on eBay for like 10 bucks um, aren't maximum power point tracking ones. They are using PVM to charge the battery. And um, yeah, if you can get a maximum power point tracking charge controller, get one because they um, uh, can get maybe 10 to 25 percent more energy out of your cell because they are using a step down converter um, instead of PWM. So, um, yeah, if you can afford one, they are a little bit uh, more expensive, like 40 bucks or so, but it's worth the investment. Um, I have, this is actually my setup at home. It's a, I know it's a little bit hard to see due to the sun, but um, this is a Carambola one board, uh, which is my router, actually. Um, this is the charge controller, this is my battery, and this is a monitoring board um, I've built to actually um, read the power consumption and publish it to the web. So it basically um, measures amps and volts, both of the uh, cell and the battery, and um, transmits it via si a serial device to, a, uh, to the router. And I push it onto the web from there. So that's my setup at home. Um, this is a 20 watt solar panel on the uh, right hand side, which is not sufficient for my um, purpose. It, it's, it works for like, it's, I think three months um, with some minor um, outages. Um, in Actually in my setup, I would need uh, a 100 watt panel. So I will get really problems uh, when it's going like to, to October, November, um, yeah, the, the router will pretty often be not available. But right now it's okay and um, I will optimize the design a little bit, uh, use a more efficient router. But that's what's actually in my, in my garage, in my garden, um, working for three months now with minor outages and yeah, collecting data. Um, the next thing is, um, what I wanted to do is um, to visualize the data. So I want to know, um, Okay, how is uh, sun affecting my uh, solar panel, and um, how long is the uptime of my router, and uh, how much power does it draw, um, what is the temperature, and all these things. Um, yeah, I, I started actually with COSM, and, uh, which is now Xivoli. Uh, you might know it, uh, it's some kind of Internet of Things um, graphing online service. Um, that's what I started out with, but I had a real problem with them because I couldn't get my data back. So I always uh, published my data to them, but I couldn't read it out. So I couldn't do any statistics on it. Um, I think they have it now, but I'm not really sure due to the progression to uh, Xivoli. Um, yeah, I tried OpenSense for, for like two or three days, which is another uh, software as a service um, provider. 
Uh, but it, yeah, it, it did work kind of, but I couldn't do the um, yeah the the um, reporting I wanted. So I looked further and I found Graphit, which is a very nice um, round robin database um, software. Here's a little screenshot of it. Um, yeah, it's again hard to see. I'm sorry, um, but it's a graphing window here. And these are my metrics for um, which I'm collecting right now. I, I collect the current of the batteries, uh, the cell um, current. Um, I actually um, calculate the amount of watt hours I've earned for the day and which I've spent. And I can actually um, do a graph where I have uh, the zero um, line and have uh, the positive where I earned more power than I used and the negative side where I spent more power than I've earned. So. Um, yeah, that's actually available online. I've put the links on later. So if you have uh, interest in it, um, you can actually play around a l little bit with it and see if, um, yeah, what's, what kind of statistics this tool supports. Um, yeah, I think it was pretty quick. So we have probably plenty of time for questions and answers. OK, thank you. So we already have a question here. I saw you doing all your calculations based on you yeah. need an 800 watt panel, but then at the end you just need a one. You were using yeah, 100 watt. Sorry, panel. it was a bit confusing. Um, I based the calculations on the VRT 54G um, because everybody knows it, and I'm actually using another router. So it's 80 percent less. 80 percent or 90 percent less. Panel. Um, yes. So the VRT55 uh, G uh, takes about eight amps, uh, sorry, uh, eight watts, and the router I'm using now is only using one watt. Uh, can you tell something about power consumption for uh, Wi-Fi cards or 3G? Uh, and uh, that on no, no, I haven't measured them. So yeah, you, you can um, or you should actually do your measurements before you buy any solar panel or any uh, battery. So measure the device, measure it on the load, and see how much watts does it really draw. So we are really on the safe side. Any more questions? Yeah. yeah. Why why are you, are you fixed on solar panels? Why do you th uh, thought about wind? Um, I do have thought about winds, but. Um, I have um, no experience with wind, and I think it's also a little bit more uh, mechanically problematic for me, because uh, it's pretty much simple for me. I'm, I'm not a hardware guy so much, so uh, yeah, I bought a solar panel uh, and went from there. So yeah, you can do it, but this talk was just about solar panels. So if you're, uh, maybe you, you put up, my, maybe on the Congress, uh, a talk about uh, wind energy it would be very interesting. Okay, um, you do not mention uh, the um, optimal angle of uh, your solar panel. Oh yeah, that's yeah, an important I thing. Yeah, you should that's aim. Yeah. Right, that's a very important thing, but it's not that important that you might think. No, um, actually, if you have your solar panel, let's say this is my solar panel, and the sun is shining from that direction, you only lose like ten percent of efficiency. 